Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having uh, a great weekend. Uh, hope everybody had a good trading day. Welcome all our friends who are joining us uh, for this weekly uh, spot all across uh, major social media uh, platforms. Welcome you guys. Um, most important part is, we, again, we, we, we focus this update from the trader's point of view. Again, I, I am not in the believer of recapping events to what the market has done. It's more of our individual journeys. Again, whether you're trading options, equities, crypto, bonds, currencies, futures, pivots, whatever your journey is, okay? We try to really speak from the trader's point of view. Again, on your own time, you could go to a million different sites, see exactly what the market did, see exactly what the Fed is thinking, opinions, talking heads, all that good stuff. We're trying to get traders to the next level. We're trying to get traders to have, you know, have a, a different bias every single day from not looking at the market from the normal point of view. So for all you guys who are joining, especially for the first time, welcome. And hopefully you guys will uh, get a lot of value, not only from this update, but for uh, many updates uh, to come. So let's talk about the markets. Um, last weekend, right? Last weekend, uh, and again, this is what's great about YouTube, the YouTube platform. You can literally go update by update, update by update, and see exactly my thought process. So last weekend, I started getting very, very cautious. And I believe that somewhere around here, and I believe it was right here, somewhere around here, we could have possibly gotten rejected because my thought process was, well, the beta names are not rallying. We're starting to come into earnings season. The, the, the ranges, and again, if you've been watching even this update for the last several weeks, you see the ranges to the upside melt, the linear melt have been very, very small. And now we're kind of getting to that really, really nosebleed section uh, of the stadium that's hard to watch the game where it's just kind of figure out why is it so hard to understand what's going on because you're so high up. And my biggest problem going into this week was, well, I, I have no problem buying stocks, right? I have no problem shorting stocks. I have no problem buying stocks. But I really was trying to avoid that rug pull because all that evidence that I was getting uh, prior to last weekend's update because of the chop factor, because of the tight ranges, I was very, very cautious. I was proceeding very cautious going into this week. And I felt that at any given point, because of those areas that we concentrate, especially those shrinking linear moves to the upside, I felt like they could pull the plug and pull the plug in a very, very aggressive way. And I started Monday's session very apprehensive because I wanted to see the bulls prove me wrong. And here's the greatest part, and we, we talk about this constantly, um, from the trader's point of view. Here's the greatest part about being a trader for nearly 20 years compared to a trader that's trading for 20 weeks. We have the ability, I have the ability on a dime to completely rethink my whole kind of synopsis of what's going on here, okay? Kind of the landscape of what I'm seeing in front of me. Uh, a new trader, they're very easily manipulated into kind of putting themselves in a box, painting themselves in a corner that they're biased to one side, they're biased to one directional, bias to one stock, and, and their judgment is clouded because their emotional attachment to what they initially think is correct. For me, I've always believed, believed this, and this is why I don't mind putting live pivots uh, on social media. I don't mind being wrong, okay? I don't mind being wrong because, again, it's all about confidence. It's all about having the ability to trust the data that you're gathering. And I really felt going into this week that there was a potential aggressive rug pull, you know, based on all the information I consumed. And the greatest part about what we do here as professional traders, especially trading pivots that, again, pivots have no bias. We don't care if they're going to go up or go down. It's just as long as these candles are confirming, the channels are confirming. The only thing we care about is the directional confirmation. So once we realized Monday very, very quickly that 
the beta names came back to life. I mean, you could clearly see it on Monday morning. You had Tesla waking up. We'll get to Tesla in a second. Netflix waking up. Amazon waking up ahead of numbers. You had Roku waking up. You had Facebook waking up ahead of numbers. You had Boeing waking up ahead of numbers. You just started seeing the snowball effect of the stocks that was so tight, so quiet, so lethargic in the previous week and a half of tight ranges, they started to wake up. And the one thing I've always said, especially to newer traders, remember, I'm speaking, when I do these updates, I don't speak to the advanced trader. I don't speak to somebody who's been trading 7, 10, 15, 20 years. I'm speaking to you guys who are really impressionable, easily market manipulated in your way of thinking. So I'm speaking to you guys because it's so important to really understand all the moving parts of the market. Again, if it was just as simple as buying and selling, there'd be a lot more there'd be a lot more successful traders, but because there's so many moving parts, it gets very very cloudy. And I've always said this you can be, I can be wrong constantly, right? Constantly in my thinking, okay? Gathering data, maybe I overlooked something, maybe I didn't look deeper into something. So I can be wrong all the time, every single day of the week, as long as I'm not wrong financially. Wrong theoretically, check, check, check. Wrong financially is a whole different story. And once you started seeing the order flow come in very, very aggressively, and Amazon took out ranges. And again, you could you could make that argument, well, they're just running it up into earnings. Then Netflix waking up. Well, they're just dead catting balance off that, you know, off the Disney uh, debacle. Well, Tesla's waking up. Ah, don't worry, wait till earnings again. We'll get to that in a second. So you started seeing all that. And by Monday around, I would say around 1030, we kind of knew the rotation was back. Okay. We knew it was rotation back. And it really started a really strong, aggressive cycle, and it really set the tone for the rest of the week. And this past week was probably one of the most aggressive weeks that I can remember. And Fridays, again, I've been saying this every, every it seems like every week I've been saying it, but Fridays have now been kind of the best trading day of the week. Again, don't ask me why. Maybe there's something some to that. Uh, because of weekly expiration and people are uh, making aggressive bets, speculating on a one-day expiration, whatever the case may be, I always go into Friday saying, oh, okay, I, no, fine, I, I did what I had to do this week. Man, I'm going to trade a little light. And the next thing I know, I'm trading very, very aggressively uh, for the session. And the most important part for this week was, again, something that we've been talking about for many, many, many moons now is the difference between trading your process or using the indexes as your make it or break it. If you look at what the indexes did to this week, and again, again, yes, it was earnings driven. You had Amazon and Facebook and Microsoft and LRCX. Twitter did uh, very, very well. So you had a lot of really good, strong, powerful names driving the NASDAQ 100. So the NASDAQ 100 closed uh, up a little bit less than 2% while the Dow Jones Industrial Average was completely flat, right? Completely flat. And this really proves the case. And again, for all you new traders out there that are trying to create your process based on indexes, don't waste your time, okay? Don't waste your time. Find your niche within the, the you know, within the, w within the lines on, on the field. The indexes, again, they're just water cooler talk. They will not define your success or failure. If you look at the disconnection between a 2% move in the NASDAQ 100 versus a, a, a flat in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that should have had no bearing, absolutely no bearing on what you should have done uh, for the trading week as a professional trader or aspiring professional trader. And the one thing that I, I definitely tell uh, new traders when, when it comes to their process, and I even tweeted this out, you could pretty much tweak, right? You could pretty much tweak any part of your process. If you're trading options, you could always tweak things, omit things, um, you know, digest better information. When you're trading equities, the same thing. When you're trading pivots, I always, I'm always back testing. You know, yesterday in the morning, I was up 6:30 in the morning back testing. Again, I don't need to do it, right? I have to do it because again, the markets constantly changes, and you have to keep your edge as a professional trader. But the one thing that we constantly constantly talk about, okay, is if you're putting yourself in a position that you're gambling, you will never make it as a professional trader. And I, and I said this all the time. 
If your first instinct, okay, is waking up in the morning and trying to buy a stock that's up 300% of the day to make 10 cents, you're going to be out of trading within the next two years. I give you my word. I give you my word. You've, you know, it's such a, such a brainless act of social media suicide that new traders are moving on to. And unfortunately, a lot of you guys are not properly funded and don't have the necessary resources to trade, you know, mid cap stocks or higher price stocks, so automatically you default to these two, $3 stocks that are 400% of the day. And what you're doing is gambling. And I said, and I tweeted this out, I go, if, if your process, and again, it's very, very, I use that word very, very loosely, but if, if that's what you're doing and the first time around you're putting on a trade and the second time around you're putting on a trade, what you're doing is you're, you're building up fool's gold. It's like the San Francisco gold rush, right? You're, you're building up fool's gold. You might make money once, you might make money twice, but this is not a long-term viable way to make money. I've never met a trader that's been doing this for a very, very long time that's doing that for a living, okay? Uh, if you're putting on your position and your first instinct is, where is my stop? That's a red flag. If your first instinct is as soon as you put on your position, you're getting chest pains and you're starting to get warm and you're starting your, your emotions all over the place. That's a big red flag, right? That's a red flag. Once you put on a position and the first thing you say is, where's my stop? That's the major flag of all. And these are all things that new traders do. And these are huge, huge red flags that your process. And again, I use that word very loosely. If you're buying these stocks up two, 300%, right? These are, <laughs> these are all signs that you are dealing with a flawed process and you will be out of trading in the next two years. It's just, it's just, the, it's just the reality. Trading is supposed to be boring. It's supposed to be lethargic and it's supposed to be highly predictable. When you're buying a stock that's up 200% of the day, it's taking out every single element that I just discussed, okay? And you're putting on the most important part of failure, which is uncertainty, right? Uncertainty, volatility, and unpredictable value to your account. And when you have all these factors, okay, and you are, again, also, by the way, trading with retail. Again, remember the whole 90% of the traders fail while well, you want to be in the same stock as them? When you're putting this all into a blender, okay, it's over for you. You just don't know it yet. So, again, you don't need to trade pivots, right? You don't need to trade options. You don't need to trade cryptocurrency or anything in between. But the one thing I will tell you is if you continue to trade these $2 stocks of three, 400%, you're a walking corpse. It's just the reality. You could take that advice, not take that advice. I have never met a trader that turned to me and said, hey, I blew out my account on Home Depot, right? I never met a trader before that turn around and say, man, this is my third account I blew up. I just destroyed my account on Procter & Gamble, right? But when you get to these two, $3 stocks that are incredibly aggressive, very volatile, completely unpredictable, you are putting yourself in a 50-50 scenario and what you're doing is you're not trading, you're gambling, right? You're gambling. It's much easier in a weird way, much easier to, to pick the money line between two teams playing football, two teams playing basketball than taking a $2 stock that's up 350% of the day and you're looking for a 10 cent scalp. It just doesn't make sense. So again, you can take that advice, you can leave it with advice, you're all grown ups. You all allocate your capital in whatever fashion you want, but the most important part is you have to sleep at night. And eventually, when the funds run out, you have two choices. Either do the same thing again and expecting different results, which is crazy, or you're going to be finding another job. But again, I know how the movie ends, and the most important part is it's time to kind of have a self-reflection, look at yourself in the mirror and see, is this really what I want to continue to do to become a professional trader? Very honest question, self-reflection time, and only especially the new traders that are doing this. Again, you can take the leave it, but again, ultimately it's your capital. So very, very aggressive week, right? Very aggressive week. The bear case was, well, just like me that was thinking, well, this can't possibly uh, be good contracting channels. We should come in aggressively. We kind of did a couple of days, but again, the value this week was just buying the stronger names on the bottom channels. It was just that it was literally the theme the whole week. Um, you saw huge bounce plays this week, uh, Twitter and Tesla and Netflix, we'll get to Tesla in a second, all these beta names, just great, great trading this whole week. 
And the one thing that I've, I've, I've really maintained was sometimes you won't get those natural two, three, four pivots throughout the day. So you have to kind of figure out a secondary way, a third, third tier way to kind of make money. And especially you guys in the live webinar, you see, you just saw this all week. Stocks that are just on rising channels, they open up lower, they bounce off that bottom 60-minute channel. I tweeted a whole bunch of these things throughout the week. They just spiked up so aggressively. And it's a really, really good, aggressive secondary way to subsidize these natural pivots. And you just saw that all week. And in a good bull linear market, you're going to get that light volume back test on the 60 minute support. And as soon as it hits those, as soon as that hits that demand, all fires go. So going into this week, right? I mean, going into this week, uh, again, the bear case was, we'll wait till after earnings, right? They're all going to die after earnings. Who the hell's buying Amazon at 1900? You got to be crazy by Amazon 1900. You can be, you can be saying we're buying Amazon quick, soon enough at 2000. But again, the bear case was wait for the earnings. They're all going to blow up. Everything will die and everything will be confirmed and the world will be back to hell and everything will be great again. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And until that happens, and again, I'm not saying I'm not cautious. Okay. I'm still going cautious into Monday because again, I understand how gravity is real, right? Rewind last week's video. All those, uh, all those uh, points that I made. I'm still very wary, okay? I know for a fact that gravity can kick in. Again, it might not kick in Monday, it might not kick in next week, but eventually you will have that day that the NASDAQ 100 will be down 150 points and the Dow will be down 600. I wanna make sure we don't get caught on that day. So every single day, I'm always looking for signs. I'm always watching these beta names. How do they react to a future spike? If they rally, that's great. If they don't, I start getting a little more cautious, a little more passive. I tear down my size and watch for confirmation channels uh, back to the downside. But having said that, I am at least positive, uh, positive frame, uh, mind frame that the beta names will continue just because how good some of the earnings were, how good some of the stocks that really uh, reported good numbers kind of maintain for the rest of the week. And again, you got to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt until you see a buyer strike. And when you look at stocks, for example, like Microsoft, right? Big, beautiful numbers, big linear run up, big, beautiful numbers. They're resting. It's waiting for a second leg. You got Facebook, same thing. Huge, I mean, huge trading day, right? Huge, huge move. You got all these bets coming in the last couple of days, the 195 calls, the 200 calls, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're making bets that you're going to have a second run at uh, the, the 425 highs, right? You got that. Even Twitter, right? Twitter came out great numbers. Twitter is a day away. You know, Twitter now that it 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 it, it challenged the five day rise in support, right? It's like a day away to kind of resuming. And you, and you see these things all throughout all throughout uh, the week. Uh, and the theme this week was beta. The theme this week was pot stocks. And when you look at all the activities, especially from Friday, uh, Friday session was ridiculously aggressive. Okay. We had big bounce plays, uh, beta was on fire, the channels were smoothly, we had pretty much something for everybody, but let's start out with Tesla, right? Let's start out with Tesla. And again, it's the most amazing thing. And if you've been watching these updates for, for a while, you know me, I, I don't care which way Tesla goes, right? I always root for the company because again, I, you know, I, 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 I fall in love with creation. I fall in love with what could be with, you know, with, with Elon Musk as a genius. He might be crazy, but he's a genius. You want to see the guy to go to Mars. You want to see a million taxis flying around in the air. All that stuff is, is great, right? But the bottom line is that, that the closing price is fair value. And when Tesla came out with earnings, uh, you saw a very, very muted reaction, not really going up, not really moving down. So the question was becomes technically which way was the wind going to blow, right? That was the only question. And, you know, you see all these emotional people on social media. As soon as you put up a positive tweet on Tesla, that's right, let's go to 500. As soon as you put say anything negative, you're blocked. I don't want to talk to you. How can you block me? I didn't know you were even, I didn't even know you existed three seconds ago. How can you block me? But that's a whole different story. Again, very, very emotional people, very, very fragile emotional people holding on to their shares, hoping for dear life. Again, we're not in the hoping and praying business. We're in the data collecting and confirmation business. But let's get to that. You know, we'll put that aside. So you started seeing you started seeing some aggressive selling coming in on Tesla. And this is where, again, folks, you can't fight technical analysis. Okay. You have to understand your levels. You have to understand why 
things are happening, where, where emotional buyers, where emotional sellers are coming in, and the stock is either going to go up and down. Before you, you start laughing and say, I can't believe I just watched 20 minutes of this guy's talking about it, just told me that information. But keep, keep this in mind. Stocks will only go up, right, once the sellers are cleaned up. Stocks will go down when the buyers are cleaned up. It's, it's, just, it's just that simple. And when you look at the pure form of technical analysis and you turn around and say, well, why did Tesla get so aggressive to the downside? And all you need to do is look at a chart, right? And you can constantly see these, the 250 level, the 250 level. This is a weekly chart. And you see this 250 level and you start saying to yourself, well, if technical analysis is so bad, well, why does it actually work, right? And I believe in technical analysis. I've been, I've been saying this for years. You don't need alert services. You don't need opinions. All you need to do is, is look at a chart. That's it. And the chart will tell you the whole story. If levels hold, that means the buyers could not be cleaned up. And if, if, a, if, a, if, a, if a supply zone holds, that means the sellers couldn't get blown up. So we had that 255 level, excuse me, it's actually the 255 level. We had that 255 level. We knew that level was going to be very, very important. And then we just let technical analysis kind of take over. And the one thing you started seeing this throughout the trading session on, um, on Friday, all these bets in the option markets, the 240s, the 230s, the 220s, the 210s. Hell, I think I even saw the 190 puts even traded. It's really suggesting lower prices. And that news came out after uh, the close on Friday, the SEC with his tweets and got the stock up two, three points after the, clo after the close. I'm looking to fade that move. I'm looking to fade that move. Any move into uh, any move into supply. And if you look at the initial supply, somewhere around here, any move somewhere around here into the 240s should get faded. Okay, should get faded. Or I could just see Tesla gapping up and going green to red in the day. So I think there's gonna be lower prices for Tesla. But the most important thing, guys, don't let emotional opinions, okay, make your investment decisions. You, some of you guys are so emotionally wrapped up into the stock it's almost like you love the, or hate the stock. I, let's just use the word love. You almost love the stock more than your kids, which is amazing. I, I, I don't think I've ever gushed over my kids, uh, how some of you guys gush over Tesla. Just saying. So make investment decisions, trading decisions based on technical analysis, not your, uh, not your uh, emotional opinions. I think you'll be fine. So let's talk about Friday's session. Very, very aggressive. So that's it. I mean, this is it. Again, guys, this, this is the private uh, feed for stock twits, and we have the same private feed for Twitter. And obviously, we do this and then all the bounce plays in the live webinar. But again, there's, no, there's nothing here. We don't cherry pick. These, these are the pivots for the day. This is all we do. These are the pivots for the day. Uh, we concentrate on beta. We do sprinkle in things you know, like a Shutterfly or a CGC, which is a really awesome trade on Friday. Um, but this is it. I mean, there is no cherry picking. If you love beta, if you trade beta, uh, again, you should definitely consider the pri private feed if you can't make it to the live webinar. But again, the live webinar is where we concentrate on personal relationships. I have personal relationships with pretty much everybody in the live webinar, very accessible, and we're trying to build uh, productive traders. And that's the bottom line. So uh, let's talk about Friday. Crazy aggressive session. So uh, 245, 50, 245 Tesla, if it builds below, can flush more. Again, here's Tesla's 60 minute channel, right? It was right here. This is it. This is it right here. This is it right here. This 245 level, absolutely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Congratulations for you guys who caught that move. Just an absolute destruction move. Uh, Alibaba, 88.50. I don't remember watching. I wasn't watching Alibaba on Friday. 88.50. Looks like 88.50. 88.50 only went up like 25 cents before it failed. Um, let's see here. Amazon. Th this was just a monster move. Uh, for all you guys who caught it, I got tons of emails. A lot of you guys caught this thing. This thing triggered in the afternoon. 1940 build is important. Why was 1940 build? Just in, here was 1940. Everybody see these two candles, guys? These are the two candles, the, the sneaky two candles at the pre-market on Friday morning, right? If you look here, 1939.57, 1939.55. So once it started building 1940, it put up put up a $10 candle in the last hour. I still love Amazon for Monday. So big job, good job for all you guys who caught that. And again, I, I said this all the time. People think you know pivots are just 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 regulated for uh, beta. It's not. I mean, anything that has a possible range that has volume could be. 
could be traded. And people ask me all the time, can I trade two dollar stocks? Yeah, you could trade two dollar stocks with pivots if they have a big range. If it, you know if the stock trades in a three cent range, and the answer is no. So anything with a range uh, you can trade. So TPTX again has nothing to do with beta. Uh, Twenty nine ninety thirty. If it builds, it should go. If we look at TPTX. Uh, TPTX, uh, again, big, big move. And again, it wasn't anything crazy, right? So you got that $30 break, stock went to 31 and change. Uh, Boeing, still a huge spot. We're still waiting for that 385 break. Uh, when it breaks 385, guys, this is gonna be, this is a potential of $10, $12 move, so it didn't trigger. This was a really good trade, right? I, I, I was waiting for the CGC for like four days, right? It was building a tight flag. Um, I got long at 49. My highest sale was at 50. I let it go through. I let it go through. It came back in. I was just, I was having a pretty good day. Uh, but this was a really, really good trade. So here is CGC. I know a lot of people uh, did very well on it. Just kept on flagging, flagging. You can see here the high here, 4870, uh, 4860, 4890. So once it built fit, uh, 49, uh, it was off and running. Good job for all you guys who took that as well. Shutterfly never triggered. Uh, Grub didn't never trigger. So here's here's kind of where I I don't want to say I screwed up Netflix. So I, I put in a two way trade for for Netflix. Three seventy to the upside, three sixty five seventy to the downside. Again, we don't care which way they trigger as long as they trigger. So I got long I got long Netflix at three seventy right, and it was so thin. It traded up about like eighty ninety cents. It was so thin. It was trading at a big spread. So thin, I got I got nervous. I don't like when things get thin. So I sold it. I wanted to make it like 50, 60 cents on it, whatever it was. So I sold it. It goes down like a dollar and change, right? It goes down a dollar and change. And I, and I put this in the Twitter feed. I said, hey, always better be safe than sorry. Again, when something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. So I got out of the trade, made a little bit of money on it. I was like, okay, I'm okay with it. Let's keep it moving. We'll get to the, we'll get to Netflix in a second. Right. Uh, 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 Roku, great job for all you guys who got Roku, 63, really huge. Why was 63 important? Uh, again, here's Roku, here's 63. The previous high that got rejected off the 50-day moving average was 62.99. We said, look, once this thing builds above 63, it should go. Uh, ran about 60 cents. I still love it from Monday above, uh, above Friday's highs. But again, good cash flow. Congratulations for you guys who caught that. NTS I like, still didn't trigger, but I still like that. Uh, and Netflix, right? Netflix. Uh, I, I tweeted this out. I go, it's holding up this last, last move. Unfortunately for me, I didn't take, I didn't take the second entry. I, I was having a pretty good day. I was just already tired, had a good week. Uh, it needs to reclaim 72.40, 72.50. It's oddly trading thin at that point, so just be careful. So adjust size. And I tweeted this out. This thing has a shot to 75. And for all you guys who got the re, uh, the, the reclaim off that 7250, great job. I said there's a puncher's chance to get to 75, and da da da, da it got to 76. So I still like uh, Netflix, as you can see, the top of the range here uh, off this 77. I like it as well. So uh, pretty aggressive day. Uh, I know a lot of you guys did very very well. Uh, again, it, it, there's nothing. Um, there's absolutely nothing. Uh, there's uh, ne absolutely nothing random with these pivots uh, is the most important thing is to sit there, watch them trade, wait for confirmation. Okay. Once you get confirmation, they start building off those levels. Usually good things are going to happen. So let me give you guys some ideas that I like for, uh, let me give you guys some ideas that I like for Monday. Okay. Um, bear with me a second. Let me see what we got here. Uh, okay. So here's some ideas that I like. Um, I like, uh, I like Roku. Uh, I like Roku. Uh, you can see how the flag is building here on the 60-minute channel. If it can start reclaiming 63.60, okay, I think you could go. You can see this Bollinger Band expand. So I think if Roku starts rebuilding uh, off that uh, 63.67, I like that. Um, I like Netflix. Uh, I think if Netflix can reclaim this whole channel roughly around the 377, it should wake up. Um, I like Amazon. I mean, what's not to like? I like Amazon. If it doesn't gap up, it starts reclaiming that 951 level. It should test at least this 970 level, okay? So keep an eye on that. Um, I like dips this week on Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, okay? Those are names that had good numbers. Keep buying, especially for those in the live webinar, keep buying those things into the rising 60-minute support. That's been a really, really good trader. Um, and I kind of like, you know, I kind of like this PYX. Um, I kind of like this PYX as well. 
Uh, all these pot stocks woke up, TLRY, CGC. I, I kind of like it. We, we talked about this, any close over this 2260 level, it did that. It closed over 2260. If it starts reclaiming 23, you could get a measured potential run to like 24 and a half, 25. So going to this week, guys, I am I am bullish until it's not, okay? Until I see the, the, the seller strike. For all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar, we start up every single day at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. And then the option flow kicks in. Our incredible, incredible squawk box uh, kicks in that nobody has. Now, that I give you my word. Nobody has uh, kicks in and then all these live pivots. So guys, for all you new traders, what you are going through, whatever you're trading, whatever you're going through is normal. Stick with it and it does click over time. Guys, God bless. Have an awesome Sunday and I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.